Hey guys, welcome back to another week of Midwest Whitetail. Ryan and I are down here at the home farm with some of the girls and Abby doing a little shed hunting. Best set we picked up today was this really nice three-year-old with the big brows we filmed a few times. And we've walked the creeks and uh, I never did search the properties for much, uh, much for EHD. Ended up finding nine dead deer today, one, one decent buck, mostly does and, and young deer. Cameras are showing that quite a few bucks are shed already, so we're really looking forward to doing some shed hunting in the coming weeks. On this week's show, we're joining Justin Lubrick on his multi-year chase for a buck he calls Velveeta. Five years of history with this deer. Really unique buck in that he'd carry his velvet uh, far into the season the last few years. And then Justin's also gonna break down how he's modified his farm over the last few years to better support bow hunting. Uh, some of these big ag fields, how he's created little tiny bow hunting spots. And then tomorrow, we're having our highlight reel, the last episode of the year. Gavin's been working hard putting that together. We've had a great year here at Midwest Whitetail, and uh, excited to see that all summated in one episode. Can't say thank you enough to you guys. Uh, couldn't have done it without you. We really appreciate all the support throughout the year, and uh, already looking forward to next year. We're gonna jump to the episode. Hope you guys enjoy. Welcome back to Midwest Whitetail. I'm excited to bring to you all a story of a buck we call Velveeta. Had multiple years of encounters with this guy. And uh, as we look back, it pretty much all the encounters kind of took place on one part of the home farm that we call uh, BVA. And that's what we referred to as the big plot. Before we jump into the story of Velveeta, I want to go all the way back to the winter of 2016 where we're talking about the big plot. On the east side, there was a rectangle uh, field and on the west side, there was a circle uh, patch back in there. But between them, there was a big section of pines in there and uh, we went in there, bulldozed them out and early uh, spring of 2017, we went in there and uh, drilled wheat and I was able to get a good stand of clover. The reason we went with wheat and clover in that little section there was whenever you remove a lot of trees like that, the pH level is really low. So we was able to go in there, pull soil sample, get the proper uh, fertilizer put down in lime. And then when you go to put the uh, clover in there, that raises the uh, soil uh, pH level along with the nitrogen level in there, and it really gets the soil vamped up for the future for us to allow us to plant row crops in there. And how we really hunted that plot during that time was there was three stand locations, one on the south, one on the north, and there was one over on the west. So we had to enter them on certain winds and coming into the 2017 bow season, uh, that's when me and Tyler really started talking about how we really wanted to get serious into bow hunting. and you know, starting to build the farm up as far as bedding, food plots everywhere, uh, you know, the micro plots. And it ended up, it was a pretty cool hunt I had that year in the late season as I witnessed two bucks fight. And the funny thing is, I ended up harvesting both them bucks in the future. Rolling into the 2018 season, I started the season off with a bang as I harvested that buck we call Misfit, which was one of the bucks that I witnessed fight on that plot uh, the previous year. Kind of speechless right now. <laughs> He's got a kicker on the back here I didn't know he had. So we got uh, the three tree stands back on the big plot, one on the west side, one on the north side, and one on the south side. It's November the 19th. I'm headed back to the uh, south side uh, stand with bow in hand. Uh, we got two really good target bucks are, uh, going in there after, and uh, I was fortunate to have a good hunt. It's the evening of November the 19th. We decided to come back in here and hunt the big food plot north of the sanctuary. We haven't been hunting it because Missouri's rifle season has been uh, the previous week here. And with us knowing that we've got all the food in the area, we was staying, leaving the most pressure down to a limit in here, you know, of hopes of uh, holding all the deer. And as you can tell, the deer basically destroyed a third of the bean plot already, but we're in here after that wishbone buck. We've got a perfect wind with a southwest wind that's gonna blow it right over our shoulder and help make it bulletproof for us, so. We've got a couple does already on the field here, so we're gonna get settled in here. It should be a pretty eventful night here for us. I 
well. I think we got about 20 to 30 minutes of shooting light left. It's been a pretty eventful night, that's for sure. Just had an encounter with DT at 35 yards. He's a mature buck, just not the one I'm looking for. I'm gonna hold out for the wishbone buck. He's coming, Tyler. There's a hot doe in there, I know. That's what he was on. Dude, there's no way I'm pulling him off that doe. So coming off of another awesome hunt over the big plot, I had two encounters with two mature bucks, was able to pass uh, that a DT buck, but the reason I was able to pass him is because he followed a doe into range there. And over the years of hunting that plot, it's really tough to get uh, these deer into bow range. And that's, you know, moving forward, we knew we had to do something with the plot. Uh, but another takeaway from the hunt is we know that this is Wishbone's core area. I can't say that I'll pass a deer that big very often, but it's post rifle season. And with this amount of food that we have in here, there's a really good chance that he's gonna stick and we think he's gonna do something special. But this is exactly what it's all about right here. It's about the animal itself and, and creating that storyline. Rolling into the 2019 season, we confirmed that Wishbone is alive as we was able to pick up one of his sheds. And in uh, step one, back on the big plot, uh, me and Tyler finally came up with a plan of how we were gonna hunt it. Uh, we were gonna eliminate uh, the tree stands and we were gonna go to hunting that plot with nothing but the uh, rednecks. The reason we got rid of the tree stands is, you know, the big plot is so close to the bedding and you know, we can get into that, the tree stands in daylight. It's exiting where we was blowing the fields. And you know, pressure is everything at this time. You know, if you can get out, they're gonna be daylight active a lot more than if you're blowing deer off of it all the time. And so that's the reason we decided to go to hunting out of these uh, rednecks, is it allows us to get in and out without disturbing any of the activity. We decided we were gonna plant two cornfields, the big one and then a little one acre plot on the west side. That allows us to get in uh, with a maze center of that cornfield to hunt that lush clover field that we had just uh, taken the trees down a couple years back. And it's gonna allow us to be a bow hunter friendly field right there where we decided to call that the pine pinch. It's June 11th. Tyler and I are up here at the farm planting some soybeans around the corn plot where we have hopes of sliding a redneck in the edge of that and the clover around that center mass of the cedars where in the years past we've seen several of our shooters using that area. Hopefully with that being said, it's gonna allow us to wrap our hands around one of our main hit listers this year. Next step for the making that a bow hunter friendly plot is, we went in and decided to put two scrape trees, one on the south side and one on the uh, north side and uh, that wishbone buck shows up, Tyler's in there hunting. He ends up harvesting that. That's his first bow buck. And I tell you, that's one heck of an animal uh, to be your first bow kill. His story all started in 2017, uh, the same night that Justin's two deer actually had that big fight. He came out that evening later on by himself and fed in this exact food plot. A tremendous amount of work has went into this deer. Justin, Mitch, myself, uh, we came in here this year, planted this corn, and set this redneck blind specifically for this buck and uh, it allowed us to enter and exit this field in a way that we've never been able to do it before. We've always had to ha hunt it on a south wind and then on your way out, you'd push everything out. Well, this maze is allowing us to get in here and hunt this food plot and go undetected. And I think that was a big factor, you know, it's why we do it. And uh, I'm just, I'm tickled to death. So Tyler harvested that giant buck we called Wishbone and the plot's working like we wanted. You know, it's a bow hunter friendly plot here. He harvested over the uh, clover, uh, but you know, we're wanting to hunt this plot year round. So what we did next was in late season, we moved that redneck and centered it 
in the center of that cornfield. And what I like to do now is, you know, we knock down about 50 yards of corn there in late season, and it allows to get all these deer into bow range in late season, which is the whole key is what we was wanting to do. And uh, I ended up having an encounter with a beautiful young eight pointer that uh, eventually gets the name Velveeta. It's a nice two and a half year old eight. I think it's that same buck we seen over there a while ago to our right. Rolling into the 2020 season, uh, the big plot, nothing has really changed. We've got the corn on the east side, and then we got the one acre plot over on the west side. Uh, we still got that lush clover field, you know, between the two plots and Nebraska's on the, you know, the north side and the south side. Uh, didn't really have uh, a target buck on that side of the farm, but all my eyes was on a buck we call Big Chief over on the east side. Uh, unfortunately, I was never able to uh, catch up with him, uh, but rolling into the uh, late season on the big plot, the only food that's around, I have a beautiful encounter with Velveeta, and this year he's turned in from an eight-pointer into a beautiful 10 with splits on his G2s. Well, that's a real nice, what we believe to be a three-year-old 10 with the kickers off each G2. I believe that's the first time we've laid, light, laid eyes on that guy this year. We literally just got set up in here and we've already got deer piling in the field, so that's a good sign. Rolling into the 2021 season, the big plot's still the same. We've got the corn uh, with the redneck overlooking that clover plot, what we call the pine pinch. And then wouldn't you know it, that beautiful three and a half year old from the year before shows up. Uh, nice, good frame deer. Uh, season's rolling all along. Uh, this is where Velveeta really starts to get his name as he really wasn't shedding all the velvet off of him. Uh, you know, as the season's rolling on, he's breaking off all his tines. At this point, we really don't know if this deer is gonna make it or not. You know, he's kind of sick looking. Uh, we did have a outbreak of EHD on the farm and uh, me and Tyler really believe that he survived it. So rolling into late season, we removed the redneck from the clover plot into the uh, corn plot. We don't have any target bucks showing up on the farm, but you know, we wanna have the stand set up just in case of something like that's gonna happen. But this next thing that me and Tyler decided to do is normally something we wouldn't do, but we went ahead and decided to remove the pine pinch. This is gonna allow us for the next year to make an L-shaped plot in order to get over to hunt that west side where we have a lot of deer move out of there for early season. And we're wanting to get a green plot over there and implement the uh, redneck in the corn there. And uh, we get that job done and lo and behold, we had a nice front move through. I had a beautiful encounter with Velveeta and another mature buck that we call Shorty. And then uh, a couple of days later, on the last day of the season, I was lucky enough to harvest that buck. Rolling into the spring of 22, uh, we was fortunate to find a shed to Velveeta. Uh, you know, this is a good sign that he made it through the winter. And uh, as we can tell that, you know, something definitely wasn't right with him last year. His horns are very soft and brittle on the ends, uh, but hey, he's alive. So now all eyes are on the big plot. The reason why all eyes are on the big plot is we have three years of history with him on this plot. The first step is the crop rotation. We just went through three years of corn and soil health is the big thing for us here. So we decided to go with beans this year. We made it an L plot. This allowed us to get a micro plot over on the West Cove and then a one on the South that we call the dream season plot. And then, so next step is we've got to be able to access these stands. So I went in and just planted uh, two rows of Egyptian wheat and that's going to allow my screen to get in and out of for hunting them plots. Wouldn't you know it, Velveeta shows up. He looks great. He's recovered. He's got a split G2 on the one side and a split G3 on the other. And uh, we really liking our odds to kill this deer this year.
Well, Missouri's bow season starts off super hot, so we're here waiting for a major front to move through. And sure enough, uh, mid to late September, uh, me and Mitch go back to the big plot for my first hunt after Velveeta to utilize this L shape that we had put in place in early season to hunt that micro plot. What a day it is as we had a major cold front move through the area yesterday as we had temperatures in the mid 90s and today we're in the mid 60s. We decided to come back here and hunt this uh, oats plot. We tried originally putting a turnip plot in but we've been having some extremely dry conditions this year and the uh, turnips didn't take the first time so we come in here and drilled oats into it and as you can tell there's a little bit of turnips coming up to it so we're in here uh, hunting a buck we call Velveeta. Uh, we've been getting a lot of uh, pictures of him on this particular pot just in the last uh, week or two. He just showed up on the farm I believe September the 11th or 12th and we've had a couple daylight pictures of him in here. Well, I wasn't uh, fortunate to have an encounter with a cold front moving through. All eyes are now focused on Velveeta, and uh, you know, he's showing up on camera and he's holding up to his name. He's still got the velvet hanging off of his tines, but uh, going into October the 16th, I have a great encounter with him. It's just, you know, great that I know he's still alive, he's in the area, and I feel like it's just a matter of time before I'm gonna catch up with him. set up. I literally been in the bind no more than a minute. Oh my god. What a hunt. Guys, it's a little after five o'clock here, and as y'all can tell, it's starting to rain pretty good here. I checked the radar before I came out hunting, and there was nothing I thought it was done for, and that's why I was a beat feeting out here, because I knew it was gonna be pretty good after that rain stopped, but the only thing we got going for us right now is we're sitting inside the redneck and we're not getting wet, so I'm just hoping that he feeds back into this plot here, so we're gonna sit in here and see what happens. So it can't get much uh, closer than that. I continue to hunt the buck the rest of the season. Wasn't able to get it done still, and uh, we roll into the late season here. So I take the redneck, pull it over, and put it on the front side of that Egyptian wheat that I planted uh, earlier in the year. And I, uh, I learned one thing, the Egyptian wheat works great. Uh, all the way up to late season, but once you start getting the snow on it, it starts to lay down. And uh, I was able to have one more encounter with him. He goes right to those beans every time, right there. He has other cameras anyways. That's awesome. And uh, just like that, the season was over. So now we're rolling into the 2023 season. just come up on the 10 acre set here and I looked over toward Tyler and I can see tines over here which looks to be a pretty good deer. Oh that's Vita. 
Holy cow. Well, you finally caught up with him. Hope that's a good sign. We ain't even 25 yards from the 10 acre set. This is the deer I was hunting uh, before I caught up to that buck we called Marty this year. So we've got high hopes for this guy for next year. Off to a good start, man. <laughs> Velveeta, right here in the same plot that I was having all them encounters. That right there is where I had the redneck setting, but we're up here today frost seeding, and I come right around the corner here, and it, I mean, it was a no-brainer when you seen that split G2 on there, who it was, so we've got high hopes for this deer, and hopefully we can kill him on this particular plot where we found the shed on next year, so that matches it up as we found the yellow one the other day, I would say probably six, 700 yards to the south of us here, in the uh, sanctuary over there, so that's pretty neat. Well, we was able to find both sets of sheds. Uh, I found the first one in the timber and the second one over in the West Cove plot. And what makes the big plot so good is the cover is so close to it there. And so what we wanted to do this year is we wanted to do a prescribed burn to enhance that cover even better going into this season. So we got a hold of the local fire department I got myself, Mitch and Tyler, so now we're gonna execute this burn. west side of our timber here um, I wanted to go over one thing the timber here behind me it looks fairly thick and it always has been thick um, over the years we've had success in here Justin harvested that misfit deer um, DT he was using this block of timber and we've always found a, a large amount of sheds out of here um, we picked up Velveeta's one side out of here and then that swish deer he was also in here <clears throat> but working with our forester Joe he informed me that at some point in time, this particular area was grazed either with cattle or with hogs. Um, and he could tell that by the amount of maples and hickories and then that thorny underbrush that's in here. So um, this is one area that we're gonna work on. He's gonna come in here and clear this pretty hard. And that's gonna allow the sunlight to get down to the forest floor and regenerate the type of growth that we're looking for. You know, it's gonna get the acorns down on the soil and then um, you know, years down the road, we'll have big healthy oaks in here and uh, it'll continue to be a thick area. And the cool part about the whole TSI program and this plan that's in place is that um, we're working with the MDC and they cover part of the cost. So, you know, we register, uh, we apply for the funding and you have to get approved and, you know, go through the step-by-step -step process. But, you know, it, it really does help to be able to um, have a lot of this cost covered. Um, so, you know, if, if people are wanting to get out and do this type of thing, you don't have to stress that, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to afford it because um, they will help with the cost share and it makes it easier on everybody all the way around. So, it's going good, we're excited. Six mile an hour wind. Uh, what we're gonna be doing tonight is a controlled burn. Uh, this is something we feel like that a lot of people overlook as it is a very uh, valuable thing to do to a piece of property. And it's something me and Tyler have worked on in the last uh, couple of years as a timber is 50%. Uh, the deer spend 50% of the time browsing in there as they do the other 50% out in the ag fields. And uh, we've been fortunate to be working with the NRCS and uh, we was lucky enough to get qualified for equip plan. And what that is, it's a TSI program. And uh, what we have to do there is uh, we have to get a forest management plan in place. And we've got that scheduled uh, for mid-June. And then we've already got on the books for the uh, timber cut next uh, summer. And what this does to a property and why it's so valuable is it takes the foliage from two to 300 pounds and it bumps it up to two to 3,000 uh, pounds of browsing. And that's just basically a massive food plot in a timber. 
and it just gets you know that much more nutrients to the deer and it's not only for the deer it's for everything for your timber as well as you know uh, by us doing the burn it's going to get the oak regeneration started and then it just opens up the forest floor so that's one of the main things that we like to do on the properties that we manage uh, so we've got perfect conditions tonight uh, so we're going to get after it here how much more greener it is and then look at those briars back in there where it's so dark. Yeah, so it hurts. Oh yeah, you can tell it's good. It got roasted. So we got that burn done, rolling into the planting season. Now we're able to take what was in beans last year into corn, which now allows us to get a bulletproof screen in and out of them microplots over on the West Cove and in the dream season corner there. Uh, we're rolling into the uh, brassica planting season. We've got the case and the Great Plains drill. All that worked in great. We got a good, nice time in the rain, and then the drought sets in. And, uh, you know, now we're getting nervous about EHD hitting. None of our bucks are showing up, and uh, we're missing Velveeta. Uh, there's K2, uh, Dipper, and uh, B9. And it wasn't until I believe September the 19th, we finally got our first picture of Velveeta, and once again, he's holding up to his name. But this year, he's full velvet, and this is when the season really get, uh, gets interesting for me, as it's all eyes on this guy here, as it's been my goal my whole life to harvest a buck that's been in full velvet. Well guys, it's the evening of September the 27th and decided to make my first set of the year here as I generally wouldn't be hunting these kinds of conditions but it is my birthday and I've always wanted to kill a birthday buck as we got temperatures in the mid 80s and it's going to cool down probably in the low 70s by the evening falls but boy it's a hot one in here right now as I got my buddy Avery behind the camera he's kind of our good luck charm as he was filming Tyler last year when he harvested that uh, crab king buck but what a year we've had uh, it started off good with the uh, rain for the food plots and it has ended badly as we are in extreme drought. As the corn we walked in on, it put an ear on, but it did not put very many kernels on it. And it's literally just as tall as me. So it's barely working for a screen, but it's getting the job done. But as far as the bugs showing up this year too, it's been extremely slow again. Um, we do have two of them that we are targeting that have showed up, but there's still four of them we're missing. And, uh, the word around the street is that there is EHD out. We just haven't walked anything. I know the neighbors found a few, uh, but we do have Swoosh has showed up. He's a five-year-old 10. He's on the south side of the sanctuary here. And then Velveeta, the buck I was targeting all last year, finally showed up, I believe, September the 18th. He showed up on the south side of the sanctuary, and then he daylighted on this plot uh, that next morning. And he's only been here, I think, two times, so it's still very sporadic. But it's my birthday, and I, like I said, I've always wanted to kill a buck, and that's the buck we're in here after. I'm kind of holding out after him this year, as he's still in full velvet, and I've always wanted to kill a buck like that. So just hopefully tonight, I can kill two birds with one stone, my birthday buck and a buck in velvet. So fingers crossed, Velveeta makes an appearance tonight. Looks like there's 
seven, eight deer. So we're gonna just play it safe here because we know he's bedded close. That was perfect, man. That maze worked perfect. See that one bedded down? Yeah, she bedded down. She was out there. Just like that. That's why we plant that corn, make it a maze. There was eight deer on the field and we got in here safe. Now they're just still out here eating, so that's a good sign. Well, guys, here it is, October the 7th, and me and Tyler are up here at the main farm. We decided to come back here and hunt the big plot on the west end after a buck we call Velveeta. This is the plot where I was having all them encounters with him last year, and we finally had a cold front move through the area as it's just been hot and dry ever since season started here. I, uh, I killed in similar conditions back in 2019 on uh, October the 4th on a cold front just like this, so hopefully this will get Velveeta up on his feet. Uh, we haven't had very many pictures of him this year, but we just had a, a picture of him just to the south of us right here on this uh, camera this morning. So we know he's bedded somewhere out in front of us here. And we had a lot of deer already out in the field when we uh, got in the stand. Luckily, we got in here without busting anything off the field. So we're going to get settled in here, and fingers crossed, Velveeta makes an appearance tonight. We're down to the last hour of daylight here. As you can tell, we've had deer movement pretty much all evening since we've been in the stand, and I'm not gonna lie, me and Tyler have been on pins and needles as every deer that steps into the field, we think it's that Velveeta buck. And we just got word that Owen has caught up to that Loch Ness Monster buck, and hopefully we can add fuel to that fire and keep that streak going here this evening. Oh, my God. 
Guys, that escalated pretty quickly as uh, we just had that encounter with Velveeta. I was looking at these bucks over to my left here and I look over straight out and there he was. He was out there about 80 to 90 yards and we had these bucks to the left here and he was coming in charging toward them and I had the window shut and obviously I couldn't get it open because they was on us. They were so close. He walked in within 20 yards and I couldn't get a shot at him and then he worked the other bucks off and never came back in. But it's just like last year when I had the exact same encounter with him, the exact same window that I couldn't get open in time, and he went right through the opening. So, oh well, it's just, it's good to see him on his feet. And first time we've seen him in daylight. We have had, hadn't had any pictures of him in daylight this year. So hopefully he's moved in here and he starts doing just like he did last year. We're going to catch up with that buck, but we were so close to adding that fuel to the fire and tagging along with Owen with that Loch Ness buck. But we'll be back at it and hopefully we can catch up with him soon. So coming out of that hunt, you know, I'm still kind of in uh, disbelief, but looking back all the way to 2018 and of all the hard work that we have done to, you know, change this plot, you know, going from not having hardly any bow encounters with deer to now putting these deer right in bow range, it's, uh, you know, it's really kind of a rewarding thing. So even though I didn't get a shot at him, I still consider this a successful hunt. To keep a long story short, uh, we ended up playing a cat and mouse game with him. He was showing up on the cameras, uh, wasn't able to have an encounter with him until mid-November down in the bottoms. And then uh, wouldn't you know it, a blink of an eye, here we are, it's late season. Well guys, here it is, it's December the 14th. We're down to our last option to kill this buck we call Velveeta. As uh, anyone knows, if you've ever hunted over grains come late season, and you get to cool temps, it's probably some of the best hunting you can ever witness. And that's what we're hoping here for as the last month of the season is we can get some cool temps and they'll be hitting this corn here. So we're gonna give it about a week and then we'll be back in here hunting. It's the afternoon of January the 14th, and Tyler and I are back up here at the main farm. Decided to come back and set this redneck again where we sat last night and had a pretty good hunt for considering the conditions. It was extremely windy and cold. Uh, we ended up seeing I don't know how many deer, and I guess with the wind last night, they were already pretty skittish and the field was clearing every so often. I tell you, we're, we're getting down to the wire here. We've only got one more night to get it done, but tonight probably feels the best I've uh, but the conditions feel the best that I've ever hunted for him this year as it's 
minus four out right now with a windshield of 23 below and we've got the corner in front of us and anyone knows late season you've got to have the grains in order to see the deer so i really truly believe we're going to see him tonight i just hope maybe everything can come together and we can finally end the chapter to this guy so we're gonna get settled in here fingers crossed vita makes an appearance Gonna go down along that edge of that. Yep. Just when I didn't think it was gonna happen, boys, we was getting ready to wrap it up. And I look over to the left, and what I thought was Vita was not. It was a uh, swoosh, another five-year-old deer. Vita was right behind him. That's the deer I've been in here after all year, and I can't believe it. <laughs> if you'd have told me that it would have taken us all the way to January 14th to kill this deer, I'd have told you he was a fool at the beginning of the year, because this deer was all over us last year, and whatever reason this year, he was not. But he ran off hard right down here in timber. Whew. <laughs> Give me some water. Oh, it is cold. Down to the wire, man. Down to the wire. <laughs> oh, heck, I guess we ought to call Mitch. Oh, no, I'm Not shaking so like a leaf. Oh, my God. <laughs>
Well, we just got back up here to the farm, went home and warmed up, and we grabbed Mitch now, so we're gonna head in over here and see what kind of blood we got. I don't think he went very far with his reaction after the shot. He ran off pretty hard into that timber there, so. Well, it's the next morning here. Uh, we got about 20, 30 yards going here where we found that bed. We did look over the uh, footage and discovered that he was quarter and two and his leg was back. So it was definitely probably one lung liver hit. Uh, so we did the right thing by backing out last night, giving him some time. So we're gonna get on the track here and hopefully he's not too far. <laughs> there he is. It's all kinds of beds in here where he was at. Oh. He ain't frozen too hard. He's got all the velvet pretty much off of him. He bedded a lot in here, didn't he? Yeah, he did. There's a bed there, a bed up there. Yeah, there you go. There's a bed there. There's a bed there. Well, guys, here he is. This is the buck we call Velveeta. We've got uh, five full years of history of this guy, and uh, it kind of started all back in 2019. He was just a average two-year-old, and then 2022 uh, when he was going to be a five and a half year old and he was a homebody he was daylight a lot i had a few encounters with him then coming in to uh this year he was going to be top on the list and um you know as everyone here in the midwest knows we experienced a extreme drought this year as it was tough conditions trying to get the food plots in uh, we would i think we planted our green plots twice just to get them come up and you know just like i was hoping he was going to show up mid-september he wasn't showing up and then finally we got a picture of him over on the west side where i'd found that shed in the sanctuary and he was in full velvet i was just thinking or me and tyler was you know that this deer was going to be on us just like he always was and this year was just a little different uh, he would be here for about a day and he'd be gone for a week and i remember i believe it was october the 8th we got a picture of him that morning going back to bed and we knew that we had to get in there and hunt that evening uh, just because you know we was anticipating him feeding out in that green plot and sure enough like clockwork he come out uh, i had the front window open on the blind hoping he would come into the uh, scrape tree there and hit it but i witnessed something that i never would have thought a full velvet buck was would have done as there was two other uh, younger bucks to my left he came right in and postured right up to him and never presented a shot to me throughout the front window and I couldn't get the side window open because of them bucks there. So he fed off and I just thought at this time that, you know, hey, he's here, had an encounter with him. Maybe he's gonna stick and, you know, I'll have an encounter with him in the next couple of weeks. And then, you know, late season starting to roll around. You know, I just thought once again that, uh, you know, like he's been in the past, he's gonna be feeding up there in the corn plot. So I was hunting hard. Actually, I've never hunted so much for one particular deer as I did this year. But uh, I was hunting late season for him. I'd hunt three or four consecutive days. He wouldn't show up and I'd be danged if he wouldn't daylight the night after I hunted. I think he did that two or three times. And uh, season, late season's rolling along. 
I'm like, man, we just can't buy a cold front. Uh, it's getting to be January, it's warm. And then finally, we look at the long-term forecast and there's a major, major cold front coming in. It produced some snow and it got down there toward the end. I'm like, man, I can't believe he's not showing up. And sure enough, I look over to my left, coming out of the sanctuary where we did all that uh, prescribed burning this off season just to enhance the bedding. And it's uh, sure as heck is working. I, we thought that I hit uh, double lung, but after we looked at the further footage, I ended up did hitting um, one lung and liver and we you know, backed out of there last night. And it's a good thing we did because when we got to him this morning, underneath his arms and stuff, he was still a little warm, but he had expired, you know, a couple hours. But that was some of the coldest conditions that I've ever hunted. And, uh, you know, I'm just thankful that the uh, coyotes didn't find him. That's what we was worried about when you get into brutal conditions like that. But as you all can tell, he's, he's worn down. I'm not sure if this guy was gonna make it through the winter. I mean, for a six and a half year old deer, his body, it's not very big. So I'm just fortunate that I was able to, to harvest him. And uh, not gonna lie, it's kind of a bittersweet moment to uh, Velveeta not being on the farm, but that's gonna open up a slot for another mature buck to slide in. And, and uh, but you know, I'm just thankful uh, I was able to get him. And I thank my friends for coming up and help recover this guy. And uh, we can't uh, wait for what next year has in store for us here. And uh, it was one heck of a year, but we finally got it done.